Before we start this video, can you tell us what's the world's largest dam in terms of power generation? Option A, Kariba Dam. Option B, the Three Gorges. Option C, Grand Coulee Dam. Or Option D, Itaipu Dam. The correct option is B, or the Three Gorges Dam. It's located in the Hubei province of China and boasts an installed capacity of 22,000 megawatts. Up till now, the Three Gorges remains undefeated as the largest hydropower plant globally. After all, it derives its energy from the third longest river in the world, the Yangtze. However, some 6,000 miles east lies its rival, the Congo River. The roaring waters of the Congo River have the power to light up much of Africa. It collects water from a nearly 1.4 million square mile area, which is larger than the whole of India. Carrying millions of gallons of water, it's no wonder why the Congo is the second longest river in Africa after the Nile. It empties into the equatorial Atlantic Ocean, creating what is famously known as the Congo Plume. For the majority of the part, the river flows inside the Democratic Republic of Congo. Later on, it curves itself to form a natural boundary with another country, the Republic of Congo. Yes, there are two different countries as you can see on the map. For simplicity, we'll be calling the Democratic Republic of Congo as DRC for the rest of the video. Utilizing the great hydro potential of the Congo, there's a plan to build the Grand Inga Hydropower Project. Under this scheme, several new hydropower projects would be constructed near the mouth of the Congo River, generating nearly 40,000 megawatts of electricity. This is nearly double the output of the Three Gorges Dam. This means that in the future, DRC could dethrone China by having the largest energy generating plant. The hydropower of the Congo was no secret and was recognized quite early on, even when much of Africa was under colonial rule. In fact, in 1921, the United States Geological Survey concluded that the Congo Basin possesses more than one-fourth of the world's potential power. After the departure of Belgian colonizers, Mobutu Sese Seko seized full control of DRC and ordered construction of two dams, namely Inga 1 and Inga 2. Both of them are connected to one of the largest waterfalls in the world, Inga Falls. The Grand Inga scheme is a continuation of these two dams and will draw as much as two-thirds of the river water, if not more. Inga 1 and 2 merely scratch the surface as it consumes 30% of the average discharge. Based on a feasibility study by ACOM, the Grand Inga would be constructed in six development phases with Inga 3 being the first of these phases. There will only be one dam wall, but there will be seven to eight different hydroelectric power stations around it to produce up to 40,000 megawatts of electricity. Its cost is estimated to be around $80 billion, including the cost of the transmission lines needed to carry its power across Africa and potentially to Europe. However, many consider the amount to be an underestimate. That's because many mega projects exceed their cost due to delays, internal politics, and global climate. As DRC is among the five poorest nations in the world, it will require support from the international community if the project's to be realized. Potential contributors are the World Bank, the African Development Bank AFDB, and the European Investment Bank. However, the timeline of this scheme is anything but smooth. Back in 2016, the World Bank withdrew its $73 million of initial funding due to strategic differences with DRC's government. Eight years later, with a different president in power, the World Bank seems to have regained its appetite. In February 2024, the World Bank's Global Director of Energy announced that the plan had been revived. With the Grand Inga up and running, the project will supply clean energy to not only its residents but also to other South African nations. South Africa has been interested in Grand Inga's power generating potential since at least the late 1990s and signed an agreement with the Democratic Republic of Congo DRC on receiving electricity from the mega project in 2013. Last July, South Africa's President Cyril Ramphosa pledged his country's support to revive Inga 3, whose plan had been lying dead. For decades, South Africa has been grappling with extreme power shortages that have affected both social and industrial life. 43% of Africans, equivalent to 600 million, have no access to electricity. At this point, clean hydropower combined with solar power represents a viable alternative. The DRC has the largest hydropower potential in Africa and one of the largest worldwide with a potential of some 100,000 megawatts. Only about 2.5% of this potential has been developed so far. Inga 3, which is the first leg of the plan, will generate 4,300 megawatts. South Africa will purchase almost half of it, or 2,500 megawatts, making it the principal buyer of Inga 3. 
The site of the Grand Inga is uniquely well suited to hydropower because it's so close to the mouth of the Congo River, the second largest in the world by volume, with a flow rate of 42 million tons a second. At present, the 49 countries of Sub-Saharan Africa have a total installed capacity of about 70 gigawatts. So the Grand Inga could revolutionize Africa's electricity landscape. A staggering 81% of the DRC don't have access to electricity. The country's wealthy people reside in the capital city of Kinshasa and have power generators at home, a luxury for many. People have to rely on only a few hours of electricity in a whole week and plan their lives around that. There are small stands with generators where you can charge mobile phone batteries for a few hours at the cost of a few hundred Congolese francs, the equivalent of a few cents. People try to do most of the tasks during the day, and at night, they resort to flashlights and candles. Given the dire situation, many have been questioning why electricity produced by the Congo River will go south when there's such a huge need at home. Even though the DRC is in desperate need of an energy miracle, there's a justifiable amount of skepticism surrounding the project. That's because the plans for the Grand Inga have been cancelled more than once. Then there's the issue of displacement of locals. The Bundi Valley, which lies parallel to the Congo River, is home to 30,000 people. It will be flooded with water and dammed to become a giant lake. These thousands of people are unaware of where they'll go and how they can be compensated. The villagers have not yet been told where their new home will be, although the government says it's identified as site for them and they'll be financially compensated. Villagers will ultimately lose their farmlands and other forms of employment with this move. According to a village chief, the government promised them jobs and a better lifestyle once Inga 1 and 2 were built, but they got nothing in return. They don't even have access to electricity or running water. Even if you put this aspect aside, other issues are looming on the Grand Inga's head. Given the sheer complexity of the scheme, the multiple stakeholders involved, and a price tag of at least $80 billion, it's no surprise that finding consensus has proven to be challenging. Not to mention that the $80 billion cost estimation was done several years ago and will most likely go up after an updated analysis. Then there's the risk of corrupt deals jeopardizing foreign investments and the integrity of the whole project. To create the reservoir necessary for the Grand Inga, the Congo River has to be diverted. This in turn will flood the Bundi Valley, affecting local agricultural lands and natural environments, causing huge methane emissions that will contribute to global warming. The effect of reduced flow in the Congo River may cause a loss of biodiversity and alter the rich wildlife that's synonymous with that region. The flooded area may also create an environment that's conducive to the breeding of waterborne vectors such as mosquitoes. Like any other project, the Grand Inga will utilize massive transmission lines to supply energy to homes and export to neighboring countries. For installing those lines, huge swaths of forest would be cleared for that to happen. The DRC has the world's second largest rainforest, and the loss of the forest to create paths for electricity transmission lines will have significant environmental and social impacts. In addition, the authorities would have to deal with the security and maintenance risks posed by such a long transmission system. Very little of the electricity generated by the Grand Inga will provide city or village-level power to Congolese people. There are mentions that the power will uplift the DRC, but so far there's no strategy on the table to show how the poor communities will access the electricity. The existing dams, Inga 1 and 2, never received maintenance for many years and consequently, they now operate at 50% of their original capacity. The two dams also contribute heavily to the country's spiraling debt crisis and are considered white elephants. Given the history of these two dams, skeptics are doubtful whether the Grand Inga scheme can be fully optimized for serving the people. That's enough from our side. We're curious to know your opinions on this. Is there hope for the Grand Inga scheme to turn into a reality? Mention your thoughts in the comments. If you liked today's video, Drop a like and subscribe to Visionary Builds for two new videos each week. We'll see you in the next video.